Hello world and welcome to Money Makes Games. Today we're going to roll the dice and see what comes up. Are you ready? Let's roll. My name is Money and I make games. To roll a dice in a physics game, we need three basic steps. First, we need to throw the dice up into the air using physics. We need to wait for it to stop and finally detect which side of the dice is facing up so that we can use that value in our game. To start off with, let me show you the setup here. In this scene, I've got a cube which I've set to collider to and a rigid body. I've frozen its rotation and position so we can use it as our floor for the dice to land on. Then I've got this lovely dice model which I got from the Unity Asset Store. Check out the link in the description. And finally, I have a script attached to this dice which is my dice script which we'll get to in a minute. You'll also notice that my dice has its own box collider and a rigid body with a mass of 0 0.1 kilograms or approximately 100 grams. In the code, first off, we'll get our torque minimum, which is going to be the minimum amount of torque we apply to roll the dice, torque maximum, which will be the maximum, and the throw strength. This is basically the strength of the force we'll be applying to shoot our dice up into the air. Then we've also got a text box here, which we'll be using to display the value of the roll. And we'll be caching the rigid body of our object so that we can perform the physics operations on it. Okay, so in start, we'll get component rigid body to grab our rigid body. Then we have a public function, roll the dice, which is called when I click on the button. And I just go rigidbody.addForce vector3.app times the throw strength, which we specified. And we're going to use force mode.impulse for that. Then we're going to do rigidbody.addTalk. Now, basically, Rigid body dot add talk takes in a force vector. So in other words, that's a vector with a certain size, which tells it around which axis to roll the dice and how strongly it needs to roll the dice or how much angular momentum to add to it. So if I were to do this, it would basically apply an angular torque to my dice with a force of 10 around the forward axis. Now, because I want a nice random roll, I'm going to do a roll around random amounts for each axis of the dice. So what does that look like? It looks like this. I take rigid body dot add torque and I go around transform dot forward. I want a random force of strength between torque minimum and torque maximum. To that, I want to add another force, which is my around my transform dot up again with a random size. And around my final axis, which is the transform dot right with a random size. Unity then adds all these vectors together to get the final vector for the force that we need to apply for rotation. Then all I do is I clear my text box. So it only displays the current value when the dice actually lands on a value. Now we start a coroutine to wait for our dice to stop moving. Since we just applied our force in this frame, I'm going to wait for one 
fixed update so yield return new wait for fixed update to give the physics a chance to start moving the dice then i'm going to check while the angular velocity square magnitude of my dice is greater than 0 0.1 you can serialize this if you want for tuning then yield return and wait for another fixed update as soon as the dice stops spinning then we will say okay do the check roll function which i'll explain in a little bit now why are we using angular velocity here instead of just the normal velocity magnitude well if you look at your dice and what it does when it's thrown it actually goes up into the air gets to the top of its arc where the gravity force slows it down to a stop and then di reverses direction so basically something like this it stops goes back what i found is that as soon as it reaches the top of the arc right there it registers zero velocity for a very short time and calls check value which basically gives me the value of the dice at the top of its arc while if you throw it it keeps spinning until it actually settles on the ground simple reason for that okay now to understand how our detection me mechanism works i'm going to show you a little demo of how the dot product of vectors works and then we'll go into the code for determining which side is facing up here I've got a little demo set up for you. I have two arrows. The transform.up for my arrow is pointing in the same direction as the arrows up. And I'm going to take the world up, which is the arrow behind it, and compare the direction of the two up vectors. I'm going to compare them using the dot product and we'll be outputting the value of the dot product of those two vectors right here so let's do this i'm taking the up object up arrow and i'm starting to rotate it away from this world up vector now as you can see the value over here starts to change and there's a pattern to this on the dot product the closer to perpendicular it gets, the closer to zero it gets. Now, if the value is between one and zero, that means that they are pointing in approximately the same direction within 90 degrees. As soon as you reach perpendicular, it's going to be zero. Let's do that. As you can see, it's very hard to get it to exactly zero. Then, as you proceed past perpendicular or past 90 degrees, it's going to start heading towards minus one. Now, when it hits minus one, that means that your two vectors are pointing in exactly opposite directions. This is very useful, but as you can see, it's very, very hard to get an exact zero, one, or minus one so what are we going to use here well we're going to do some rounding now for those of us who don't remember rounding in math means rounding to the nearest 10 or to the nearest one so if i have a value of 86 we're going to round up to 90 or if i have a value of 84 we'll round down to 80 same applies for integers so here we've got a value of 0 0.938 if we apply a rounding to that that means we're going to get a value of 1 which tells us that our dice is pointing up somewhere in this range up to 45 degrees which is reasonable because if you play with the dice in real life 
sometimes it would end up one or two degrees off zero you know if your table's a little skew or there was a piece under the dice same thing applies here it's very very difficult to get your dice to settle at exactly 90 degrees perpendicular to your surface so let's apply rounding and see what that does for us so now we have a very nice testable case so here's our code for check roll firstly in my comments i've noted which axes point in the directions of which numbers so i've denoted here that when the y axis is pointing up that means that the value of the dice is 2 if the dot product is minus 1 that means the y axis is actually pointing straight down so the 5 would be on top same with the x if the x direction for our object or our dice is pointing straight up we would get the dot product of 1 which means number four is facing up and we'd get a minus one if the four was facing straight down and we the three was facing up okay so we'll declare our variables y dot x dot and z dot we'll set our roll value to minus one and then we'll start to create these values so we're taking the dot product of our transform dot up, which is our y direction for our for our game object, and we normalize it. Then we take vector three dot up to compare that with. Now the dot product for this, if the y is facing straight up, would be one. Otherwise, it would be minus one in that range if you use math.round same applies for our z and our x then finally we just do a switch statement to check for this so let's say we've rolled it and the y-axis is pointing to the side and the x-axis is pointing upwards so the y dot product here would be zero because it's perpendicular fails this case fails this case goes on we get here the dot product for our x-axis and the world up does indeed equal one so we'll set roll value to four it fails this case the z product would be zero because it's also perpendicular to the x so our roll value here is still going to remain the same because it fails this case and this case that's pretty straightforward we now have our roll value we take our text box set the text and we're good to go from here on if you're using it in a game you can pass the value to whoever needs the value and that's it you are now finally ready to roll the dice until we see each other again, my name is Moni, and I make games.